Every year I like to do my list of players whose stocks I'm buying and selling going into the season, players that I feel are either underappreciated, underrated, and poised to have a better than expected season or even a breakout season, and then of course the players who are maybe being a little too hyped, perhaps they signed a major contract extension and got overpaid, or it's even a player who's at his peak but might fall off and have a worse than expected season where I would quote unquote sell the player's stock. Think of it just like the stock market, buy low, sell high. Buy a player's stock while it's low, sell while it's high. And so in this video specifically, I'll be going over player's stock we should be buying this season, figuratively of course, not literally. And then I'll have a follow-up video sometime next week of those player stocks that we should be selling. As always, if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, it would mean a great deal to me if you subscribe to help the channel grow it. In return, I'll be providing more NBA content like this. We are nearly at 80,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can get there by the end of this month. Now, a few call-outs on how I'll be approaching this, but by buying a player stock, it doesn't necessarily mean I think that they're going to have an all star level season it doesn't even mean i think that they're a good player necessarily but more so focusing on their current value perception around the league the kind of season they had last year and also even considering their current contract what they're making if they're also in a contract year which usually means they're going to be putting their best foot forward to get paid all of that so consider that when i'm going through these as i'm sure some will say you're really going to be buying stock in that guy yes there is a reason for it and I actually have quite a few on this list so some of them i'll actually be going through a little more quickly but the first one i have on this list is actually rj barrett look i was never a big fan of barrett i always felt that he was a good player a good contributor on offense but nothing overly special unlike some of his draft comparisons when he was drafted and also being the number one overall recruit coming out of high school like there were some who thought that barrett was going to be a star in this league he's not that kind of guy but I do think that in a rebuilding situation like the Raptors are in right now, where he's going to get ample opportunity, more touches, higher usage, more shots up. People forget that he actually put up over 21 points per game after getting traded to Toronto, shooting 53% from the field and 39% from three. Not only that, but he put up a career high in rebounds at 6.4 a game with the Raptors and a career high in assists at 4.1. Man was putting up some of the best numbers of his career last season. On a bad team, yes, but again, it's why you buy stock in a player when they're going to be in a situation where they're not going to be recognized as much being on an irrelevant team, but putting up big time numbers. Barrett is also only 24, so he's progressing and getting better. I think he's going to have a better than expected season. Not an all-star level season, but one of the more impactful players for the Raptors when a lot of people have been writing RJ Barrett off because he didn't work out for the New York Knicks. Next on the list, and you guys know I had to include someone from the Bulls, but even my biases aside, I do actually think this is a great buy low, sell high scenario, and that's with Josh Giddy. Now, I wanted to include Zach Levine in on this as well because his stock is quite possibly at the lowest it's ever been in his career with the perception of him around the league, and I still think that a healthy Zach Levine is one of the more efficient scorers in the game of basketball. But I'm only going to include one Bulls player in on this, and it has to be Josh Giddy for a number of reasons. I won't even discuss the trade because, yes, I know the Bulls should have gotten more for Alex Caruso, but Josh Giddy is coming off his worst season of his career in the three years that he's been in the league anyway. What looked like a promising young player in his rookie season quickly turned into, well, this guy can't play off the ball, he can't defend, he can't shoot. If he doesn't have the ball in his hands and can't create for himself or others, what else is there that he can actually do when he's on the court? And so people started talking about Giddy as a liability when he was on the floor. And that was put even more into question when he started getting benched in the playoffs and teams were leaving him wide open from three, daring him to shoot. So it's safe to say that Josh Giddy's stock, his value is at its lowest right now. Now, whether you think Giddy is still going to be a good player or not is really besides the point because Josh Giddy is now going to be back in a situation similar to that of his rookie year. A team that is, for all intents and purposes, rebuilding, isn't going to have a lot of pressure to win, is in need of a floor general and starting point guard to help facilitate the offense. He's going to be able to have the ball in his hands most of the time. And because he's going to be on a bad team, he's probably going to be putting up eye-popping numbers and filling the stat sheet. Oh, and also don't forget that he's going to be in a contract year and he's gonna be looking to get paid. So yes, Giddy's stock is low. This is the time to buy when he's going to a new team and a new environment. Next on this list, I've got Chet Holmgren, which 
Uh, might be a surprise to some because he's a player most would say that his stock is already pretty high, which it is, but I'm expecting a breakout season from Chet. I think the fact that the Thunder added Hartenstein to be their center and they can have Chet solely focus on playing the four where he's more effective. He was already incredible as a rookie and now going into his second season with somewhat of a new look team on the Thunder roster with the addition of Alex Caruso and Isaiah Hartenstein while also removing Giddy, which is going to free up more shot attempts and usage that was going to Giddy before. I fully expect this to be a season where Chet is selected as an all-star and we start to say, okay, this guy is starting to arrive as one of the next big unicorns in the league. Another guy's stock I'm buying going into the season is Dyson Daniels. I always liked Daniels' game as a great defensive specialist, but also has shown some flashes on offense as well. Just didn't fit well and didn't have the opportunity on the Pelicans that you would like to see from him. But with the Pels trading him in that deal for DeJounte Murray to the Hawks, this now will give him more playing time fit a need on the Hawks who desperately need defensive players and again the dude is only 21 years old still very young still pretty raw as a player I can see this being a season where he starts breaking out not saying it's going to be one of those years where he's a top candidate for most improved player of the year but enough of a jump where Hawks fans can be happy about what they gave up for DeJounte Murray. Another young player I've got on this list whose stock I'm buying also on the same team as Daniels is Jalen Johnson. Johnson's stock is already starting to climb because of how gifted and athletic he is and also having what most would consider to be a breakout year where he went from barely getting any minutes and putting up five points per game to being a key player in the Hawks starting lineup and putting up 16 points per game and now the Hawks view him as a key piece to their future. Given where the Hawks are and they're kind of taking a step back if you can call it that, there is going to be a great deal of focus on Johnson's development with Murray off the team. That means he's going to get more touches, have a bigger role in the rotation with him and Trey Young as the focal pieces on offense. So yes, I expect Johnson to take an even bigger leap going into next season. It's why I would be buying his stock. I'm going to list a couple older players now. This one is probably a surprise and it's going to be a short term buy and that's Chris Paul. Look, everyone knows CP3 isn't the player he used to be. This could quite possibly be his last season in the NBA. And yes, I could be wildly wrong on this, but while everyone is saying Chris Paul is washed and that he's coming off a very underwhelming season with the Warriors, which let's be real, that was never a good fit and made no sense for the Warriors in helping them win a championship, but Chris Paul signing with the Spurs on a one-year deal and being that veteran leader and mentor for the young Spurs team, specifically Victor Wimanyama, and also being the playmaker that Wemby needs when the Spurs have needed a true point guard, I could see this being a better than expected year for Chris Paul, where he shows up incredibly well and helps Wemby take a leap in his career. Again, I'm only buying stock in a 39-year-old player because his value is so low right now with most thinking that he's washed. I still think he has a little left in the tank, especially on a young rebuilding team that has very low expectations. The next older player that I'm going to be buying stock in this season is Buddy Heald. I said this before in one of my recent videos on some of the best contract signings of the offseason. This was one of my favorite underrated transactions of the summer. Buddy Heald's season ended pretty poorly, where he was effectively out of the rotation for the Sixers in the playoffs, which was his first postseason of his career, by the way. Heald's shooting was also very inconsistent towards the end of the year. And when Heald's shot isn't falling, what else can he really do, right? But Heald going to the Warriors and putting him next to the greatest shooter of all time, a player who commands so much of the defense's attention, that's going to open up a lot of opportunities, open looks for Buddy Heald, who is an elite shooter, by the way. Man has a lot of flaws, but he's next level when it comes to his shooting from behind the arc. And with the Warriors losing Klay Thompson, they're going to be looking for that next catch-and-shoot guy to fill that void. And so with Heald coming off a bit of a down year, not showing up well in the playoffs, signing a cheap contract, I think he's going to exceed expectations being a part of the Warriors rotation. And then this last one is a little random, but I was thinking about the Brooklyn Nets and how they fully entered and embraced the tank for Cooper flag sweepstakes after trading bridges and will likely trade Cam Johnson and Dorian Finney-Smith before the start of the season. And regardless of how bad they're going to be, they're still going to score points or need to score points. They're still going to win some games. And I was looking at a guy like Cam Thomas, who is the definition of a high volume scorer who thrived last season in putting up stats on a bad team. You now take away Bridges and potentially Cam Johnson, and he's going to be more or less the Nets number one option on offense. I don't think Cam Thomas is that great of a player. 
I don't think he's going to be an all-star. I wouldn't even say he's a player that you would consider his stock to be low right now, but he's going to be one of those players that is going to be stuffing the stat sheet on a nightly basis for a tanking team in the hopes of getting traded. And there probably will be some team close to the deadline who might just ship a pick or two over to Brooklyn thinking Cam Thomas is going to be that guy to get them over the top. And it's why I'm buying stock in this guy while I can before his value more than likely falls off going into next season. So there you have it, players for which I am buying stock in in this upcoming season. Let me know what you guys think. Who are you buying stock in for this season? Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.